Hello, dear students. Uh, let's begin the second part of the lesson Lost Spring. I've already uploaded the first video of the lesson. Okay. In the second one, second video, I'll resume from where I had left. Okay, so uh, let's begin the second video. I remember a story a man from Uripi once told me. So the writer, Anizang, tells us. In fact, she shares a story a man from Uripi. Uripi is a place uh, that belongs to Karnataka. So the man from Uripi once told her a story. The story was, as a young boy, he would go to school past an old temple. He used to go to school and on the way, the man uh, used to cross an old temple where his father was a priest. So there in the temple, his father was a priest. He would stop briefly at the temple. He used to stop there in front of the temple, at the temple and pray for a pair of shoes. And there in the temple, he used to pray for a pair of shoes. The man from Uripi told the writer that when he was a boy, when he was a schoolboy, he used to go to an old temple. His father was the priest of the temple. And on the way to school, he used to stop there in the temple and he prayed for a pair of shoes. He didn't have a, a pair of shoes. That's why he used to pray God so that he would get a pair of shoes. 30 years later, I visited his town and the temple. And after 30 years of that incident, after 30 years, Anizang visited that town as well as the temple, which was now drowned in an air of desolation. Okay, so the town as well as the temple was now desolate. Desolate means lonely, uninhabited. Okay, it was uh, drowned in an air of desolation. That means there was an atmosphere of desolation. There was an atmosphere of uh, loneliness. There was an atmosphere of abandonment. Because there was not so much of... Uh, hustle and bustle there was not so much of human activities there was not so much of wandering of the people that place appeared to be completely quite lonely okay so in the backyard in the back side there lived there lived the new priest so in the back side of the temple in the backyard of the temple there lived the new priest not the one that used to be when the man from Uripi uh, used to go to school because then his father was the priest but now when the writer Nisa went to the temple there was a new priest there were red and white plastic chairs and he saw uh, in fact the writer Nisa saw red and white plastic chairs there in the temple a young boy dressed in a gray uniform a young boy she saw a young boy he was dressed in a gray colored uniform wearing socks and shoes and he was well clad he was well uh, dressed uh, in a gray uniform and he was wearing socks and shoes arrived punting and the young boy was punting he was gasping for breath punting means actually breathing quite uh, uh, quite um, quite actually uh, restlessly breathing actually or gasping for breath when it when it happens actually when you just uh, run to a particular place or when you just rush through or when you are in a hurry then when you just run or walk very briskly you appear to just gasp for breath okay you appear to just uh, take long breaths actually you struggle for struggle to breathe rather okay so that was the that is like uh, a, that sort of a situation actually was there when the boy was punting for bread or gasping for bread and threw his school bag on a folding bed and the boy was well clad in that gray uniform socks and shoes and he came running in and threw his school bag on a folding bed and he talked 
and he threw the threw his school bag on a folding bed. Looking at the boy, I remembered the prayer another boy had made to the goddess when he had finally got a pair of shoes. So when the writer and his young looked at the boy who threw his school bag to the folding bed, then he remembered or recalled the story. Okay, story of um, the other boy. That means the story of the man from Uripe. Okay, who once told him that he prayed God for a pair of shoes because he didn't have a pair of shoes. But this boy whom the writer met when she visited uh, the town as well as the temple Okay. They were contrasting. They were quite different from each other. The old boy, 30 years ago, okay, he prayed God for a pair of shoes. On the other hand, this boy, who already had a pair of shoes, okay, he simply just threw his bag to the folding bed. So there was a contrast. There was a, there was a uh, difference, clear difference between these two boys. Okay, now the writer was thinking about all these uh, things, all these issues. Then, uh, okay, looking at the boy, I remember the prayer another boy had made to the goddess. So, while looking at him, he remembered another prayer, remembered the prayer another boy had made to the goddess when he had already finally got a pair of shoes. Okay, let me never lose them. Then, he remem then she remembered the prayer of another boy. Who finally got after praying God he finally got a pair of shoes and then when he finally got the pair of shoes he prayed God that let me never lose my pair of shoes let me preserve my shoes the goddess had granted his prayer and the goddess allowed granted his pray prayer allowed him uh, his wish Young boys like the son of the priest now wore shoes. Young boys like the son of the priest, the new priest. They wore, they managed to wear shoes. They have, they do have shoes. But many others like the rack pickers in my neighborhood remain shoeless. But there are other people, other rack pickers, other children who are rack pickers. Rack pickers means the children who pick up certain things from the garbage, from the disposed uh, uh, articles, okay, uh, disposed objects, things. So there are many others, many little children, many others who are rag pickers in the neighborhood of Anizang, the writer. And these rag pickers, these small children, they remain shoeless. They don't have shoes. Okay, while uh, while people like while children like. Uh, the child of the priest had shoes, but these rag pickers, they don't have shoes. Okay, they are living under extreme poverty or penury. My acquaintance, acquaintance means familiarity. When you just know somebody, you are familiar to somebody, okay, then that is called actually, that person is called your acquaintance. A person who is familiar to you. He may not be necessarily your friend, but he is a person who is known to you or who is familiar to you. My acquaintance with the barefoot rag pickers leads me to Simapri. So the writer's and his young's acquaintance or his familiarity with the barefoot rag pickers, with the rag pickers who walk barefoot, who walk without shoes, without footwears, leads me to Simapri. So it leads him to Simapri. These rag pickers, these barefoot rag pickers, these rag pickers who wear nothing on their feet, who walk bare feet. It leads him to Simapri, a place where all these rag pickers live, a place on the periphery of Delhi. Simapri is a place which is on the periphery. Periphery means on the outside, outside of Delhi, yet miles away from it metaphorically. Simapri is close to Delhi. It is in fact outside Delhi, quite close to Delhi, adjacent to Delhi, but yet miles away from it. Yet it appears to be miles away from it, metaphorically. Metaphor means um, metaphor means uh, 
object or something with an implied meaning it is a kind of literary device okay which is an implied meaning for instance if i say he is a lion that is a metaphor he is a lion means he is courageous okay he is very courageous he is bold all right so metaphor means a literary device it is a figure of his speech in literature which has an implied meaning okay it is rather it also functions as a symbol okay just like a symbol actually which has an implied meaning internal meaning inner meaning just like that so this is basically a situation simapuri is just outside delhi but it appears to be so far away from delhi because it is undeveloped unlike delhi it is underdeveloped or un developed because only rag pickers live there in that place it is uh, lagging so far behind a place like delhi because it is undeveloped those who live here are squatters who came from bangladesh back in 1971 the people who live there in simapri are squatters are settlers a squatter here means settlers who came from Bang bangladesh back in 1971 and these people came to simapri from bangladesh in 1971 when there was the uh creation of the bangladesh when east pakistan was dissolved in fact there was a further partition then these people came from bangladesh to simapri to settle down there so these are these are the squatters or these are the settlers from bangladesh these are bangladeshis bangladeshi people settled down in simapri sahib sahib's family is among them and sahib is a boy who is a rag picker sahib's family also um, is among those rag pickers his family is among those rag pickers as well who settled down there in simapri simapri was then a wilderness simapri was then a complete wilderness wilderness means uh a place which was uninhabited a place which was abandoned a place which was completely desolate or complete wilderness isolated it didn't have any movement of the people it still is simapri still is in fact it says simapri still is very uh, much a wilderness but it is no longer empty but simapri is not empty like it used to be in the past because so many squatters so many settlers from bangladesh live there they are rag pickers they work very hard they pick up things from garbage from disposed items and they just live there in structures of mud they have created structures of mud they have created houses of mud made from mud okay with roofs of tin and tarpaulin their houses are constructed with mud then the roofs of their houses are made of tin tarpaulin as well okay devoid of sewers they don't have any sewer system any drainage system or running water they don't have any running water as well live 10000 rag pickers and in that kind of a situation in that sort of a condition pathetic condition these people live there they don't have any drainage system they don't have sewers drainage system for proper or uh, proper actually flow of uh uh proper flow of water okay used water and um, dirty water then 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 they also don't have uh, uh, access to running water they don't have water running water facility so 10000 rag pickers 10000 poor people who do rag picking okay they live there in simapri so simapri the condition living condition of the people are really pathetic very deplorable extremely bad they have lived here for more than 30 years they have been living here for a period of 30 years without an identity they don't have any identity without permits they don't even have permits license but with ration cards they only have ration cards that get get their names on voters list they do have ration cards which allow them to vote and they have managed to get their names in the voters list because they do have ration cards which is required which is a prerequisite for having your name registered in a voters list
So that's it. They have just a ration card to get their names in the voters list. Otherwise, they don't even have permits or license. They don't have any identity. And enable them to buy print. They have these uh, ration cards to get their names in the voters list and then also makes them able to just buy grain, buy their food, buy their seeds. Food is more important for survival than an identity. And as far as these poor people are concerned, to them, food is more important than survival, than existence. Uh, food is more important for survival or existence than an identity. To them, food is more important for survival because they have to live, they have to survive, they have to exist than an identity. They are not aware of their identity. They are not aware of creating an identity. They are not aware of uh, what? They are not aware. They are not aware of developing an identity, their own identity. They are more concerned about having food for survival. If at the end of the day, we can feed our families and go to bed without an aching stomach. We would rather live here than in the fields that gave us no grain. So these people, say a group of women, are uh, in tattered saris. Okay, so they keep saying, in fact, a group of women in tattered saris, in torn saris, told the writer when I asked them why they left their beautiful land of green fields and rivers. Then when Anis Zhang, the writer, asked uh, a group of young, uh, a group of uh, women who were wearing tattered saris, torn saris, okay, torn saris, which are torn actually, uh, they simply said that those fields, those places which were green, which, but uh, with the passage of time when they had those natural calamities, those places could not give them their grain. Those places, the fields, did not give them the grain or the seeds. They had no means of survival. They had no food to survive or exist. So, they were very concerned about having food, having the means of their survival. And they feel that if at the end of the day they can feed their families they can feed their families they have enough food for their families and they go to bed without a without an aching stomach they go to bed without an aching aching means paining okay paining creating pain and if they go to bed without a paining stomach that means if they fill up their uh, stomach if they just uh, what if they fill up their tummy with food and they don't have to go to bed uh, with an empty stomach okay that would be more um, uh, useful for them okay so we'd rather live here than in the fields that gave us no grain so they simply love uh, their present situation in Zimbabwe because it is far far better than what used to be in Bangladesh, what used to be when they were there in those, around those green fields of Dhaka because they didn't have the means of survival. Okay, so they are more concerned about food. Clearly, they are more uh, concerned about having food for their means of survival than developing an identity. Okay, so this a group of women in tattered saris when I asked them why they left their beautiful and green fields and rivers. So this is this this is what told by a group of women who were wearing tattered saris to the writer when he asked them why they left their beautiful land of green fields and rivers. They simply replied like that. Wherever they find food, they pitch their tents and become transit that become their transit homes. So wherever they find food. They are just vagabonds. They are, uh, they are actually wandering people. They travel from one place to another. So they pitch their tents. They just put up their tents. They just uh, settle down there. Wherever they find food, they just settle down there. That become transit homes. That become homes, actually. They are just like transit homes. This is not permanent. They travel from one place to another in search of food. Okay, so wherever they find food, they settle down there. And those homes, they're... Uh, shelter 
it becomes a sort of transit home from where they will again shift to some other place with the passage of time. And survival in Simapri means rag picking and they feel that the survival in Simapri is just rag picking. This is about rag picking. In Simapri all the people do rag picking, they just pick up things from the garbage. Through the years it has acquired the proportions of a fine art. With the passage of time through the years it has become acquired, it has become a sort of a kind of fine art. Garbage to them is gold. They feel that garbage is just like gold because from garbage they find valuable things, precious things. It is their daily bread and by selling those things they just earn their livelihood. So it is their daily bread, daily food, a roof over their heads and it is just like a roof over their heads. It is, it is, it is a means of shelter, it is a mean, means of uh, their house or it is just like a house for them because by doing rag picking only they can have food they can survive they will also have a roof over their heads they will have shelter even if it is a leaking roof even if it is a leaking roof they their houses that means their houses are, are not made or constructed properly their roofs of the houses in fact uh, uh, actually are leaking roofs because water also snakes through those leaking roofs but still that is it that is shelter for them okay but for a child it is even more and for a child it is even more I sometimes find a rupee in the I sometimes find a rupee even a 10 rupee note Sahib says and the boy Sahib tells that sometimes he finds a rupee, sometimes even a 10 rupee note, his eyes lighting up. He gets, while he says this, his eyes light up. His eyes become bright. His eyes brighten up because he becomes happy when he says this. When you can find a silver coin in a heap of garbage, you don't stop, you don't stop scrounging for there is hope of finding more. So he says, Saib says that when you find a silver coin there in a heap of garbage, then you don't stop scrounging, then you don't stop searching for more because there is hope of finding more. Because you become hopeful that you will get more and more what um, money, more and more coins or valuable things, valuable items. So you keep on just looking for, searching for more things. It seems that for children, garbage has a meaning different from what it means to their parents. Okay, so it seems that for children, garbage has a meaning different, which is different. As far as the children are concerned to them, the meaning of garbage is different from what it is for the parents. For the children, it is wrapped in wonder. As far as the children are concerned, the garbage is uh, is something which is a matter of curiosity. They simply want to know what is there in the garbage. What is there in the garbage? Okay, it is garbage creates, uh, garbage is an object of curiosity as far as the children are concerned. For the elders, it is a means of survival. But as far as the elders are concerned, the adults are concerned, to them, it is a means of survival, their existence. Only uh, by scrounging in the garbage, only by finding precious things in the garbage, they can survive. Okay, by selling those things, by uh, searching those things, they can survive. But for the children, they always look at the garbage or the heaps of garbage with great amount of curiosity, great amount of interest. Just like Sahib does. One winter morning, I see Sahib standing by the fenced gate of the neighborhood club. So one winter morning, Anizang saw Sahib was standing by the side, beside the fencing of his neighborhood club. Okay, he was standing by the side of the fencing, watching two young men dressed in white playing tennis. And he was watching two people, two men, they were playing tennis. I like the game, he hums, content to watch it standing behind the fence. And he simply said that he liked the game he liked tennis uh, content satisfied content means satisfied here okay so he was really satisfied to watch it 
standing behind a fence and he was really very happy satisfied to watch the game watch tennis played by those two men behind the fence he was st standing and uh, he was watching those two men playing the game and he enjoyed it enjoyed every bit of it i go inside when no one is around he admits he says he admits he confesses that whenever when there is no one around there inside uh, uh, then he goes inside as well the gatekeeper lets me use the swing then the gatekeeper allows him to use the swing okay he used this he used the swing as well so he confesses that admits that to the writer sahib too is wearing tennis shoes that look uh, strange over his discolored shirt and shorts he's also wearing sahib is wearing tennis shoes but it looks his shoes the pair of shoes look strange over his discolored shirt because he's wearing a shirt which is completely discolored faded sober and shorts he's wearing shorts okay um, as well so though he's wearing the pair of tennis shoes it looks really strange actually because he's wearing a very discolored discolored shirt someone gave them to me he says in a in a ma manner of an explanation he simply tells the writer that uh, someone gave him that pair of shoes as if he is explaining something okay the fact that they are discarded shoes of some rich boy who perhaps refused to wear them because of a hole in one of them doesn't bother him the fact the fact of the matter that uh, these shoes that he's wearing the pair of shoes that sahib is wearing are discarded shoes discarded means rejected shoes of some rich boy the rich boy refused to wear them because there was a hole in one of them in that pair of shoes actually in one of the one of the shoes there was a hole so the rich boy didn't want to wear them he simply refused to wear them but though sahib knows all about this he is not bothered he is not he is not worried because at least he has got a pair of shoes to wear which he always wanted so it doesn't bother him bother means to trouble okay bother means to trouble disturb worry is it or not so for one who has walked barefoot for one like sai for someone like sai who has always walked barefoot naked foot without wearing shoes without wearing any footwear even shoes with a hole is a dream come true to him even a pair of shoes without uh even a pair of shoes with a hole okay it's just like a dream come true because he has never managed to get a pair of shoes but finally having finally got a pair of shoes it doesn't really matter to him whether um, there is a hole in that uh, in that pair of shoes okay more important thing is that finally he has got a pair of shoes but the game he is watching so intently is out of his reach but the game the tennis game that he is watching it is completely out of his reach he cannot play the game he cannot uh, in fact uh, he cannot manage to play the game because he is living under poverty it is beyond his reach it is beyond his reins because he is living under poverty this is just a dream which is which cannot be fulfilled this morning sahib is on his way to the milk booth then he is going to the milk booth in his hand is a steel canister in his hand there is a steel canister he is he is having a steel canister container and i i now work in a tea stall down the road then he informs that he works there in a tea stall he says pointing in the distance he is showing it and uh, uh, he is pointing his finger and showing at a distance that he works there in a tea stall i am paid 800 rupees and all of my meals and he father informs that he is paid for his work there in fact he is paid 800 rupees and all his meals there he gets 800 rupees as a salary and all his meals does he like the job i ask then the writer ask him whether he, he likes the job his face i see has lost his lost a carefree look but when the writer son anisan inquires of him uh, or ask him rather that whether he likes his job or not then his face uh, seems to lose that carefree look his face uh, shrivels up 
okay becomes dry becomes uh, grief stricken or what worry stricken he becomes worried there is a, a mark of worry or look of worry on his face the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag he would carry so lightly over his shoulder and it seems that it appears that the steel canister steel container is much heavier than the plastic bag that he used to carry so lightly over his shoulder so when he was a rag picker he simply used to just put a plastic bag on his shoulder and it appeared to be really very light and he used to just do that with uh, he used to do rag picking with uh, with an element of happiness with an element of delight though he was a rag picker he was uh, he was quite happy with his job but now though he's carrying a steel canister and he's paid 800 rupees and all his meals there in the tea stall he's not happy in fact the steel canister appears to be heavier than his plastic bag that he used to carry as a rag picker on his shoulder the bag was his the bag belonged to him the canister belongs to the man who owns the tea shop the bag the plastic bag belonged to him when he was a rag picker but now the canister still canister still container that he carries it belongs to the man who is the owner of the tea shop sahib is no longer his own master now sahib is no longer his own master he used to be his own master when he was a rag picker though he was poor still he is but though he was poor while rag picking he was his own master he did whatever he wanted he did according to his uh, wish whatever he wished whatever he wanted he used to do it okay but having uh, joined as a um, as a worker of the tea store okay he was under always uh, he was under the man of uh, under the supervision of the owner of the tea stall okay so he was now no longer his own master all right with this the uh, first story of uh, this uh, lost spring written by his son is over okay with uh, so with this story i will just wrap i will end this uh, video in the next video i'll discuss the other story related to one more child called Mukesh. Okay, I hope all of you have understood my explanation. Hope for your uh, cooperation in the next video. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.